It's the Polo Podcast. Hi, everybody. Andrew from Polo Reef here. Today, another podcast with a very special guest. I welcome you, Mark Levinson. Thank you very Polo much. Reef. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Mark is uh, from as long as I have known him and been in this hobby. He has been educating and maybe a father of educational YouTube of, of some sort, and now has just gotten a big role in uh, as the chief editor of Coral Magazine. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you very much. No, the job fits my schedule, if it works out well. Uh, when they approached me, they approached me at MACNA a year ago, and they said, could you consider helping run the magazine? I said, yeah, I'd consider it, and they said, we want you to work for James Lawrence as his understudy, and work with him for maybe six or seven months, learn the ropes, and then he can retire. I mean, he had agreed all this too, but the idea was that I would train with him, he would be able to retire and enjoy life, and I would just step into those shoes. And then when his sudden death happened, I thought, well, I guess that's not gonna happen now. And then they still reached out to me and said, would you consider it? And I said, I never got the training. And they said, we'll work no. with you. Uh, right. They said, can you, you know, start, uh, let's say it was probably August. Yeah. August 15th is your first day. And I said, yeah, but September 9th, I believe, was Markna. Yeah. And I said, yes. I won't have any time for anything with a magazine because I will be... Uh, we're going to get into Markna. We, right. But, yeah, but okay, I just I said, I'm going to be so busy. There's yes. no way. And they said, we'll work with you. And? When I got through Markna, I was so exhausted. They said, we're ready. I'm like, I'm not. I'm so tired. Yeah. And then it took me three or four more days to get my feet under me and get to work. And then I worked for a solid month. I probably worked one or 200 hours to make one magazine. And my job is literally to make the magazine to decide what goes in there. I am in charge of what makes it and what doesn't. So, like, did you have to learn the magazine business? Are you, yeah. Did you learn the publishing business? What are you doing day to day there? Yeah. So what happened was they needed someone that would make the decisions. They just needed someone that says yes or no just like you do with your reef tank, you know? Ultimately, you decide. Okay. And, they, and they have a team that's been in place for many years. Right. They've, they work together, they know the ropes. Right. I right. did reef keeping magazine back in the early 2000s for about a year, year and a half. And during that time, I was in charge of that one. And I chose every article, I chose every picture, I chose every poll, and it was an exciting process. And so they knew I had that experience. But print magazine, I did not. I'm actually too impatient. I want to re release a blog today. I don't want to give an article to a magazine and wait six months for it to show up. I can't stand it. Right. Why is this so good for your schedule? What I liked, you know, the job I have selling aquarium supplies and building acrylic products and running a CNC right. machine, it's physical. Right. And I was thinking it'd be kind of good to have another job that brings in money where I don't tear up my back as much, you know, or I can just sit at a computer and do some work. Initially, I would work Me Loves Reef, my company, selling aquarium products during the day and then do Coral Magazine at night. And I was working with Matt Peterson over the phone for four or five hours every single night because I had to learn as quickly okay. as possible. Right. But now I'm, I've changed it to where I'll do some Coral Magazine in the morning, Me Loves Reef for the afternoon, and then possibly a little Coral Magazine in the evening. But... I've been told it will take me 100 hours for every issue. But realistically, it's probably 10 hours, 10 hours, 22 hours, 49 hours, or mm. something along those lines, because right. now you're getting close to deadline, and everyone's coming to you with every article, every picture, every caption, every typo, and you have to really scramble to get everything exactly right, because you cannot be late for the printer. What do you think is the most uh, time-consuming thing that you're doing right now? Learning their system. It's so hard. Coral Magazine historically has been the English version of the German Corolla. And so we would have this German issue to look at for comparison's sake. We could see if we like the content, but you have to then take that German article and translate it into English. Right. And it's those kind of things I'm trying to better organize to where I don't have to go hunting because I feel like I'm burning time. Tell, tell us a little bit more about, about you and, your, and the company and the acrylic product business. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I used to strip and wax floors for a living. Oh, okay. And so my job was a professional stripper. And I told that to everyone, <laughs> and they always laughed. Yeah. And back in the day, you know, you didn't have what we have now. So, like, I would put a, I'd write a sentence on Reef Central, and, and people say, is it true you're a stripper? You know, it says it right there under your name. I was like, yes, it's true. And I'd say, if you want to see samples of my work, and I made samples clickable. And you clicked it, and it took you to Sparkling Floor Service. 
and there was this giant shiny floor. And they're like, oh, I get it now. We thought you meant stripper. <laughs> and, uh, but at the same time, I was learning things about the reef keeping hobby and I was documenting it on my website. So I'd get, and I'd be working all night with a buffer, just buffing the floor, <laughs> thinking in my head about my article. And usually when I got really pissed off, is that okay to say that? I get pissed yeah. off like I'm writing an article about that. And I would write my big thing and then I could reference anyone to that article and never have to type it out again. And at the same time, I started to work with acrylic and I was making things for myself and people said, wow, can you make me one? So I started to do a little acrylic business on the side, but my floor keeping business, which was my own company, was my income. Well, after doing that work for 21 years, I was sick of it. I didn't want to mop my kitchen floor. <laughs> and, I, and I still yeah. don't. <laughs> so you wear socks and you come over. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but um, in 2009, I said, I'm never cleaning a floor again. I decided Mila's Reef would be my sole source of income or I'd starve to death and never work again. And you know, if I died, I didn't have to work. YOLO. I decided to quit my job and make my website and make my money. And I was able to stay in business and I've survived all of it. And then when COVID happened, I was sure that's it, I'm done. Who's gonna spend money on an aquarium? They need a roof, they need food, they need electricity, they need to not die of COVID. Turns out yeah. the went aquarium all business the way up. went cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. Every, like as, as with yeah. a bunch yeah. of things did, yeah. yeah. Had you even learned that, that, that um, you do the milling? Or who does the, the work on the acrylic? Me. You so do I, um, How did you learn that skill? First, well, I used to work in construction when I was in my 20s. So when it came to working with acrylic, it's really about perfection. It's about getting precise measurements. And I was already doing that with trim carpentry. And so this was just precision to make sure no water comes out. And now I have an actual full-size table saw and I was working my driveway. During the COVID years, I decided to build a building out back that is now where I work. So, cause I was building sumps in my living room for a decade. And instead now I'm doing it out there. And when I come to the house, it's a home. It's not my business. I get to separate church and state, so to speak. Got it. How did that improve your day to day? Having this now, like, I believe it's a shed, right? That you now have and you have like it's your own studio. production and <laughs> the studio, My, excuse me. Yeah, so yeah. how does the studio have improved your life? Yeah, no, I love yeah. it. I love to go out there and do my work and I love closing the door and I'm done for the day. And I come inside and I'm with my dog and my reef tank, and my television, I cook some food, I do whatever, you know, but it's just, I'm not thinking about work right then. Can you survive? just on doing what you do on youtube on youtube no right not even remotely mark then was really really impressive to me like i don't know how long it took you to schedule 24 24 hours <laughs> yeah besides just even doing it yeah. but like did you gain followers was mm -hmm. it worth was it worth the effort i want to know about that yeah. because we're going through it ourselves so yeah how do you you say to yourself well I, 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 is this going to bring in enough versus that return from mm -hmm. a pain in the neck standpoint. Yeah. Did it? No. Right. And see, <laughs> when and I wanted- the time spent. Right. right. When I wanted yeah. to do Markna, I, I had an idea- I mean, you're gonna be so early in, and ahead of your time in this, I think. Yes. Yeah. Just my own opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, Markna yeah. was one of a kind thing. Yeah. yeah. Nobody in my own it. opinion. Right. Yeah. I, I think the first year won't even, people will remember it like uh, Star Trek, like the year that the year <laughs> that we, Aww. whatever. But yeah. I, I really, Again, talk, tell me. Yeah, so when the idea was floated, it was a friend, Kyle Weiss from uh, uh, New York, I believe. And he had said, you should do Markna because there's no Macna. And I was like, oh, that's hilarious. And it was right. like two weeks later or a month later, he said, it stands for Mark's Aquaria and Reef Conference North America. I was like, whoa, the letters work too. That's hilarious. Yes. So I reached out to Maz and I said, do you guys mind? First of all, I said, are you doing a virtual show? And they said, no. And I said, we're absolutely not doing it. I said, okay, well, I have this crazy idea. What do you think if I were to do Markna? And I got the same reaction I, I expected. They laughed. They said, that's hilarious. I love it. You should do this, but let's talk with the board of directors. They signed off and they said, that's fine. Go ahead and do your thing and promote Macna during Markna. And I said, that's fine. And then I had 85 days to pull the show together. And normally Macna is a three-year plan. It's, it's a big ordeal. These things, you cannot put these shows together quickly. There's a lot to organize. And then I was like, what if I did one long day? What if I did 24 straight hours, 24 speakers? This sounds amazing. And everyone's like, you're nuts. And I was like, and they kept saying, you can't stay up 24 hours. Like, why not? People do it all the time. And they're like, ah, there's no way. I want to see you do this. And I'm like, 
challenge accepted? I don't know. It sounded, sounded fun. Right. And then I started to think about who do I want for speakers? And the thing was, I was sharing this and I thought it would build momentum. People thought I was just joking around. They didn't know. And they're like, wait, Markna's real? I'm like, yes, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> There's an actual website. There's links. I'm populating it every day with another speaker. And so I was trying to come up with people I wanted to have. And I really wanted to have a bunch of Instagram people that I follow that I find fascinating. And I just, you know, not just a YouTuber or something like, like someone that is excellent on nudibranchs, I wanted them. Right, well, even experts if, in their field. How did you even go about scheduling this? Well, I contacted each person and said, <laughs> would you do this? Yeah. And, I, and I said, I want people from around the world so that my time zone will land on their daytime. So if I'm talking at nine o'clock at night on Markna, it's like eight o'clock their time. I'm not asking them to be up at two in the morning for me. Right. And so I chose, I wanted people in Australia, I wanted people in England, I wanted right. people in Canada, I wanted people, you know, in Bon Air. Now, did you have a look at their presentation too beforehand? Or? Only a couple. Okay. Only that would have been, that would have been another 64 days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I wanted to do it. But the thing was, you yes. had to find all these people. And right. I had people tell me, you should check each person and do a test, an audio test. I was like, eh, it'll be fine. We'll just connect. Right. And uh, it, was, it was hard, you know, yeah. it was, it, and I had a master plan. I had someone fantastic that I reached out and said, I want you to run the show with me. And I said, no, I can take a break. I can take a nap. I can use a restaurant. I can eat a sandwich. You could be on interviewing too. And he's like, I am honored. I love this. I've been wanting to do this for years. This is a great idea. And then two days before the event, he says, I'm not doing it. And I was like, are you, and he wrote, and I don't want to discuss it. And I was oh. like, oh my God. And wow. I was like, and so of course, the freight train is on the tracks. We are heading to this thing. Right. And I was like, okay. And the next day or night or whatever you want to call it, you know, following within 24 hours, he sent me a text and he said, I'm not going to leave you high and dry. I'll do a Zoom tutorial with you tonight of how to do these things. It's not as bad as you think. I flew in Dwayne to help uh, to do thing, anything. He was a gopher. He could walk the dog. He could bring me food. He could, any, or he could work on my tank. I don't care. Right. And I brought an Ian who uh, does a lot of video and movie stuff production. I said, I might need your help. So had him fly in, he couldn't wait to come. But it was the three of us trying to do this event, and uh, I had to work with this knowledge that I gained the night before. And on top of that, I heard that you guys had no electricity. Yes. Well, that was a whole so, other, that was another, yes. what, oh, it's... This giant storm hits, and I look outside the window, because I hear this horrible sounds like, woo, 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 woo. I'm like, what wow. is that? And I look out there, and I see a pile of boxes of Fritz salt outside. I'm like, this has to go inside. Wow. I think a storm's about to happen. And as I run out, the trees are going bonkers. Hail starts coming down. They're in there working. They've got a radio going or something. And I'm like, I need to get the salt in here. And like, wow, what's going on? And they're like, whoa, what's happening? And we shoved it in as fast as we could. Then power went out. <laughs> they came in from outside like, we don't know what's going on, but we're gonna sit in the dark. We'll join you. And I said, I'm gonna go out there and turn on the generator and get the tank going. My wow. goal was go to bed at 11 o'clock. Friday night to be fresh for a 24 hour marathon. I got to bed at four and I was up at 6.30. I said, we're gonna proceed as if the power will come on any minute. And it didn't come on for 13 hours. Wow. <laughs> so we yes. had to operate in a house that was completely closed up. My room was so hot because I had the lighting and I had the computer screens and I couldn't move. And I had a giant terry cloth towel and whenever they were on screen, you know, the guest was on screen, I'm like, take off my glasses, dry off my face, and keep going. That room was easily 95 degrees. Unbelievable. Wow. And how, I just kept yeah. doing the show. How did the tanks fare? Because they weren't the same, right? Yeah. The generator, though, Especially, in the, in the yeah. It's building. a great question. But it's and the temperature. To be honest, what happens around 5 o'clock, while I'm, having, I'm doing an interview, my brain says, you have no idea what the temperature is of your reef. But Caitlin's reef, the little 27-gallon, uses hydros. That was plugged into an extension cord. I looked up that tank, and it was 80 degrees. I said, if that tank's yeah. 80, my reef is heading that way. And I texted Dwayne, so like I'm on camera. I hit the mute button. I text Dwayne, get in here. He runs in and he's like, what's up? And I was like, I need you to take my keys, go to 7-Eleven and buy all the ice you ha they have and float it in the sump. And I need you to go to my freezer, get the frozen 20 ounce bottles and put them in Caitlin's reef. And I say, I need you to do that right now. And then he says, on it, he walked away. I turned the unmute and I continued the interview. <laughs> and I just hoped that everything would be okay, and I had to continue with the show. Wow. You forget that people used to have chillers and not used to worry about this yes. stuff. Yep. You put on this thing that took forever to plan. 85 Mother, days. Mo <laughs> Mother Nature 
said. Yeah, Murphy's Law. You're not yes. doing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. You did it. I did it anyway. What do you think, as we look back at history, what will, what will have come from it? I think that people really enjoyed it. There are things I learned from I should have done differently. Like I was told specifically in the beginning, do not do separate live streams. Just have one continuous one and let your audience just build and build and build. And people are like tuning in at hour 15. He's still going, that's crazy. And the chat's just going bonkers. And I was like, no, 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 I don't wanna do that. I want every presentation to be separate. So we have 24 videos and people can go find that topic. That video, and, right. And not right. go look through a super long file trying to find when Julian Sprung yeah. spoke, for example, right, or whatever, right? right? right, right. Did you gain any follow? Like, what? No. What, nothing. No, I, I picked up one follower. One follower? <laughs> it All said, congratulations, for one you got one wow. new follower. Wow, that's I was like, great. wow, you know? <laughs> and I actually was warned, again, it was Terrence that said to me, you realize you will probably lose people because they're gonna get so many notifications. Another live stream, another live stream. That's gonna irritate them. And I was like, who cares? And I think I lost like 67. But I was like, out of 70,000, it's okay. If a few don't like notifications, that's okay. I actually warn people in advance, if you're a subscriber and you happen to see this video, turn off notifications if you don't want to be driven crazy on September 9th. Right. But so your goal it. was more education. Absolutely. It wasn't more about gaining the followers. It wasn't no. about numbers. It was no. more, let's get that information out and yeah. just spread the knowledge. And do it in high, the best high quality we could do. Yeah. You educate people on mundane stuff. Yeah, I've covered it all. That's right. the thing. I've been doing yes. this for about six years of live streams. There's something like, I don't know, almost 300 live streams. I remember, Mark, you were, I mean, you started with a blog. That's how I found you. Yeah. And that's why She my... claims that you are her inspiration <laughs> yes. for an enemy. I've yes. heard that. You have yeah. heard that I don't before. believe her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you heard no. that from her? Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I, when yeah. I reached out to you, I remember, because I remember 2008, yeah. I started I fresh water since I was a teen, yeah. then went to salt water, and then I saw this anemone. I remember I had my first anemone, 10 gallon tank, yeah. and then within two, three days, it completely dissolved. And it broke my heart mm -hmm. because, you know, if you have an SPS, it just bleaches out. Right. And then I started looking and I couldn't find any information. Yeah. There's no information out there about anemones. And then I found you. And yeah. then you were talking about, and you saw all the anemones mm -hmm. and how to care of them and be yeah. careful with this and be careful with that. And I remember every day I would see, I would wait, oh, he posted something. When you made that bridge from blog to Facebook and, and to then to YouTube, yeah. but you also make it simple. You don't give sometimes, to, yeah. yes, not big words when you're like, oh, let me get the, let me, let the me dictionary. Google what does that mean? <laughs> no, you're like, no, yeah. this means this, this and that. I did not want to do YouTube. I said, my articles are on the website, they can read it. And I said, Mark, you don't understand this generation watches. Yes. They're not gonna read. I'm like, they need to read. I, I was just really adamant. And I had a guy that pestered me. He was really growing on YouTube. And he said, you have to do this. And I was like, I don't wanna do it. And then I got the iPhone 2. And I was like, oh, this is easy. I can film and I can hit upload. So I made this first video and I tried to upload it to YouTube and YouTube says, nope. It's longer than 15 minutes. You're not allowed to do that. And I was like, oh. And so I had to trim out things. Like, I just cut out information. I cut out knowledge. Killed you. I Killed know, you. I know. So yeah. I, I did what they said. I did 14 minutes and 59 seconds. I hit upload and people kind of like the videos. And then eventually YouTube says, okay, you can do longer now. You've earned your, your ability to have an hour. I was like, yes. But that video about the anemones, has resonated with so many people. And the funny thing is I had one light, I had my iPhone right there on this tripod and I think I held it on with duct tape. I had no special holder back then. Yeah. And I sat down on, I think it was a box next to the tank so the tank would be next to me. Yes. And I had a piece yeah. of paper on the tripod or the piece of tape with eight things I was gonna discuss. Just eight bullet points. I have never had a video <laughs> catch on like that one. I was like, what did I do? And I was just like, mm. They're not that hard, but the fish tour says, good luck, you're just gonna kill it. And I was like, I'm offended because I wanted to live. And people was like, this is the video. And I'm like, wow, that one really connected with people. Because it was honest, it was yeah. down to earth. We almost felt like we were there with you. Yeah. And, and so what's next for you? What do you think you're gonna be doing? Well, I had another crazy idea that I've only shared with four people. So I'll tell you, because my brain never stops. <laughs> and, um, Get ready to laugh. Right. I'm going to tell you three words. Yeah. Reef keeping, the musical. 
<laughs> okay. It's gonna be great. Uh, You're gonna love it. <laughs> well, anyway, it's a it's a crazy idea. I talked with a person who does voiceovers for anime, right. and he is like, "Let's work on a love story." And I was like, "I want to parallel to reef tanks thing." And I don't have time for that, but I want to totally do it. <laughs> All right, it's great. Mark, thank you so much. You have been really an inspiration. Yeah. Definitely, thank you. I it's think, been, I and think, we're so excited too. Listen, you know, the, the reason yeah. why I supported the Mark thing is. Oh, thank it, you for that. Yes. Oh, it's, 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 <laughs> that was crazy. Uh, yeah. Well, it, to me, it was it was ahead of the time. I think. I think. I think we could. Definitely. You know, something was something is gonna come of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a lot of people ask for our Mark Mark 2.0. Yeah. It, will, will there be? Or is that? Oh, you don't even know. You just. Well, oh, well, initially. Absolutely not. Right. But <laughs> never I mean, say again, never. Subscribe. It, it wasn't. Yeah, I know, right? That, that's yeah. actually put food on your table. <laughs> I know. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks and for having me on the podcast. Andrew from Polo Reef. Mark Levinson. Like, subscribe, click, bring you more content, please. Signing off. Enjoy your day. <laughs>